The subject of this section is going to be the idea of tangent planes and linear approximations. Now this is the same as what was covered in a Calc 1 class, so what I'd like to do is start by doing a little review of tangent lines and the concept of linearization. So back in Calc 1, you could have a curve in the xy plane, something along these lines, and a value that we'll refer to as x0, and a tangent line at this point. Now because we don't necessarily know what the y value is, we'll just call it f of x0 for the time being. Now we have what was known as the linearization of the function at this point, which was essentially the equation of the tangent line. So it was whatever your function value was, plus the slope of the tangent line, times x minus whatever that x coordinate was. The idea is that near x equals x naught, the linearization of your function is approximately equal to the function itself. So this was the idea behind linearization and how to find a tangent line. What we're going to try to do is extend this to three dimensions. So first we'll start with the definition. We'll say let z be a function of x and y and we'll define a point. We'll call it x naught, y naught, f of x naught, y naught be on the surface. <clears throat> the tangent plane the tangent plane to the surface at this point is the set of all tangent lines to the surface at this point. The tangent plane to the surface at this point is the set of all tangent lines to the surface at this point. Now again, kind of difficult to draw something like this. There's definitely a couple of really helpful visuals in the textbook, but if I wanted to bring in an actual visual aid, I am once again going to bring in the racquetball. Now I had a point marked on here from the last video. So imagine for a moment that I take a tangent line at this point and I just rotate it so that I'm sweeping out all of the possible tangent lines at this point. The plane that is swept out when I do that would be considered the tangent plane. So next big question becomes, how do I get the equation of this tangent plane? I'm going to show you the derivation of where this equation comes from. Now, in order to find the equation of the plane, the two things that you're going to need will be a normal vector as well as a point. Now, we've already established what the point is. You'll be given an x value and a y value. We'll call those x0 and y0. Plug them into the function. You get the corresponding z coordinate. Now, there are lots of different ways to get the normal vector. The way that we're going to use is find two vectors that are within the plane and then take their cross product, and that'll give us a normal vector. <clears throat> now, there are two slopes of tangent lines that we can definitely get from this because we now have access to partial derivatives. The problem is those are not necessarily given to us in the form of vectors. So what we're going to do is turn them into vectors. So these would represent two directions that are within the plane. Here's how I'm going to turn them into vectors. When I took the partial derivative of f with respect to x, I was treating y as though it was a constant. Treating y as though it's a constant means that y will not change. However, for every one unit that x changes, z will change by whatever the slope of that line is. Now we can apply the exact same logic for the partial derivative with respect to y. We're treating x as though it's a constant, so x doesn't change at all. 
but for every unit that y changes, z is going to change by whatever the derivative is, or whatever that partial derivative is. So to get the um, normal vector, I'm going to take the cross product of these two vectors. So take the cross product of 1, 0, partial of f with respect to x, and 0, 1, partial of f with respect to y. Now there's no way that I'm going to be able to fit this cross product on the amount of paper that I have left, so I'm going to go ahead and flip over to the other side of this page and show you what this cross product is going to look like. So across the top we throw i, j, k. Across the second row we'll do the vector that represents the partial of f with respect to x. And across the third row we'll do the vector that represents the partial of f with respect to y. Now, as is typical for the cross product, I'm going to recopy the first two columns, go and give it a little slashy slashy. The good news is that going in the downward direction, the i component will be 0, the j component will be 0, and all that we get is 1 for the k component. In the upward direction, though, <clears throat> the k component will be 0, the i component will be the partial of f with respect to x, and the j component will be the partial of f with respect to y, like so, giving us the following for our vector. This will be the negative partial of f with respect to x, the negative partial of f with respect to y, and 1. Now, these are supposed to be numbers rather than functions, so it's implied that after you take the derivative, you're actually plugging in the given x and y values. So let me write out what that's going to look like. Standard form for the plane was something along the lines of a times x minus x naught plus b times x, uh, y minus y naught plus c times z minus z naught equals 0. So what I'm going to do is use this for a, use this for b, and use this for c, and we'll see what we get. So this will be the negative. Uh, actually, we'll, uh, we'll introduce the other notation for partial derivatives, minus partial of f with respect to y, evaluated at x naught y naught. The reason that I switched up the notation is so that we can indicate that we're actually um, plugging in the values of x naught and y naught. Now I am going to make some algebraic changes to this. Basically anything that has a negative in front of it, I'm going to move it over to the other side. So I'm going to add this to both sides, I'm going to add this to both sides, and I'm going to add this point to both sides, giving us z is equal to f of x naught y naught plus partial derivative of f with respect to x evaluated at x naught y naught times x minus x naught plus partial derivative of f with respect to y evaluated at x naught y naught times y minus y naught. This is, I guess, standard form you would call it. So standard form for a tangent plane. Now I do want to point out the similarity between this and what we wrote for the equation of a tangent line. So the equation of a tangent line, going back to the other side of the page, what we refer to as the linearization was function value plus derivative times change in variable. Function value plus derivative times change in variable. We'll take a look at what we have here. We have z is equal to function value plus derivative times change in a variable plus other kind of derivative times change in a variable. So it's basically the same structure to what it is. Now with that in mind we could also define a linearization in this fashion and say that L of xy is equal to this exact same formula partial of f with respect to x evaluated at x naught y naught times x minus x naught plus partial of f with respect to y evaluated at x naught y naught times y minus y naught then we can make the claim that near <clears throat> the ordered pair, x naught, y naught, 
the linearization will be approximately equal to the actual function. Now that we've seen where the formula comes from, let's work through a couple of examples where we actually do all of these things. 